You asked for it, so today I am delivering a full beginner-friendly tutorial all around Cricut Design Space so you can get the most out of your machine and easily make projects that you love, so stay tuned. A huge thank you to Cricut for partnering with me on this video to show you guys my tips, tricks, and hacks all around design space. And if you're new to Whiskey and Wit, my name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIY and budget home decor, but I also have a huge library of tutorial videos all around Cricut from the software to how to do things to projects from start to finish. So if that interests you, check the full playlist down below so you can take what you learned here in this video and apply it to projects. I hear from so many of you that you are intimidated and some of you haven't even taken your machine out of the box. Do not be scared. We are going to walk through today so you can see how easy it is and you can get that machine out and get it to work for you. So the first question, what is Design Space? Design Space is the free software that Cricut uses to run all of its machines. So by purchasing a Cricut, you will need that software. Think of it as the printer plugin or the printer app that you need when you're printing from your computer or phone. Same thing with the Cricut, you need Design space to be able to cut projects on your machine. You can go to design.cricut.com. It will tell you that in your whole machine setup, but if you're reinstalling or putting it on something else, that's where you're going to find it. It's going to allow you to either download for Windows, Mac, Android, or your Apple device. You can download it for whatever device you're going to use. Another thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about what device to use, it needs to be either Bluetooth enabled or you need to have a USB plug-in. That way your computer or phone or whatever you're using can communicate with your Cricut to tell it what to cut. So let's hop onto my computer first. I'll show you some of those things and then also I will be sharing some tips and tricks for iPad, iPhone, mobile devices as we get through the video. Let's first get acquainted with the Design Space home screen so you kind of know where you are in lay of the land. Now up in the right hand corner, that's where you're going to start a new project. You can also set your design space experience to whatever machine you're using. So just drop it down and select that. On this home screen, there's going to be also a ton of different ready to make projects. You can scroll through those. You can also find some of Cricut's help videos if you need help with something specific. And then if you expand the three lines on the left, there are a ton of different options over here to help manage the different pieces of your account. The biggest thing here is that this is where you would go to link your cartridges. I've gotten questions of people upgrading machines and not knowing what to do with their cartridges. Here you can link them so that you can use them in Design Space. So we could spend a ton of time on this homepage because there is so much stuff to see, but let's head over to a new project and get into the canvas. So for Cricut, your workspace is called the canvas. So when you navigate to the canvas, you're going to your workspace. Now up to the left, you can start a new project. You can select a template. So this is a lot of different options on things that you can use as a visual aid. So for example, if you're wanting to make a t-shirt and you're a visual creator, you can go through, select a t-shirt. You can toggle at the top to what size t-shirt and this will give you a visual aid to design on, which is really helpful. Next is projects. So there are so many different projects that you can go through, even some that are free. If you don't have Cricut access, you can click it and either customize or you can go ahead and click make it, which literally that is click make it and it will walk you through all of the steps. Insert here, press start here, all of the things. So these are great if you're just starting out with Cricut and kind of want to get the hang of things. And then also you can take these and customize them to what you want to do, which is also cool because you can start here as inspiration and edit it as you go. The other great thing with these Make It Now projects is it's going to outline the materials that you need, the time, the skill level, which is really great to kind of get a high level view of what you're jumping into before you commit. The next big icon on the left is images, and this is where you're gonna be able to find different options that you can use for projects. You can search up at the top for different things to cut, and you could also filter by a ton of different things on the left. The other thing too is when you've uploaded images, they will appear here as well as in your uploaded section down at the bottom. There are a ton of options from pictures to calligraphy to everything in between. So you just select it and click insert. If you're looking for text, you're just gonna click text on the right hand side, that's gonna give you a little box and let's use my name, I'm just typing that in. And then at the top, you can click to change your fonts. You can select to search all of your fonts, your system fonts, or just Cricut fonts. You can click this box up here to search for a specific font. I like this Bikini Babe font, so let's apply it. All I did was click it and then I've got this really fun script font here. Now you can go to the box to the right of it and decide if you want regular, bold, italicized, if it is applicable. You can edit the font size and then you can also figure out if you want to do some more in-depth editing. 
So that is going to be your letter spacing here. So that is going to be how close or how far apart your letters are. The next one is line space. So if I add another line of text here, that's going to show how far apart or close my lines are. You can align left, right, and center. You can also get more advanced and take your text and separate the letters. This is nice if you want to have it curve around something or you want to get really deep in designing, but you don't have to mess with that if you're okay with how the font looks on its own. So while we're on the topic of text, did you know that you can also write with your Cricut? So I made these really quick and easy little gift tags. My Cricut wrote on them for me and then they also were cut by my Cricut. So I just went into projects and selected that I wanted to be able to cut and draw as well as with cardstock using the filter on the left. I found these really pretty tags, some with words, some with flowers. All I had to do was make sure that the cut was the same color so that they all appeared on on the same mat so here I'm going through and just clicking the element of the tag because they were a pre-made image Cricut makes it easy and they were already attached but if you decide to make your own like I'm doing here just make sure you select both your writing as well as your tag and click attach so the writing and the cutting will be all in the same spot Another thing you can do right before you cut is change your material size. So I like to change this to eight and a half by 11 because I'm using paper sized cardstock. But then I go through select cardstock as my material. I like to use the blue Cricut mat for cardstock because it's a lighter grip. And Cricut has these pens that come in a variety of widths. So my machine told me to put in the 0.4 marker. So it's gonna tell you to put it in slot A. So you just open up the clamp, push it right in, Close the clamp and everything will click into place. And then you just insert your cardstock and the Cricut will do the rest. So in two swipes, it will do the writing first and then your cutting. It is really fun to watch. I've made a variety of different things with this. I've made hair tie cards for bachelorette parties, different cards. I've made tags like this, the sky's the limit, and it's really easy. You can type out whatever you want and have your Cricut write it for you. They're gonna pop right off your mat and they are ready to use and it looks like you wrote them by hand. They're beautiful and they're so easy to make. Now let's go back and do more of a block font to show you how to curve it. Now Cricut has come a long way with curving fonts. Here it is so easy to do now. You just go up here, select curve, and you can slide this little diameter piece to figure out how you want it to curve. You can also go up here and rotate it. You can also do that by selecting and pulling the little circle up in the right hand corner, that little icon you see. And then you can also change the position of it on the page by both the button up in the right hand corner that I'm showing you here, or you can drag it yourself. As far as sizing, you can either drag or go up here and select these arrows. The W stands for the width, H stands for the height. If you want to freeform change it, so have your aspect ratio lock turned off, you just click the lock to the left hand bottom corner or the lock above size, and that will allow you to free drag it around. You can flip your file both horizontally or vertically if you want something to look mirrored. And the offset tool is another thing that Cricut has put a lot of work into and has really developed it. You can select a piece of text or an image and then decide how thick you want your offset, which is basically a border. Then you can decide if you want a curved corner or a squared corner. And I always leave the weld offsets on so it was all one piece. So then I've got my text plus this background. Next is shapes, and this is just like adding a shape into Microsoft Word or any other editor software that you have seen. Two other big things I wanted to call out while we were here are save up in the corner. So if you create a project and you wanna save it for future, you click save, name it, and it will save to your projects within your design space account. You can also add it to collections here. So I group my things by here are all the projects I did for a Cricut video, here are all my Christmas projects. So it makes it easier to find, especially if you do a lot of Cricut projects. Another thing up here is copy and paste. So if you have an element on this canvas that you wanna to transfer to another canvas, a different save project you can just select your element do cut or copy whichever you want to do and then go over to that new canvas and paste it there it's easy if you've got elements that you like but you want to add or remove some other stuff that's an easy way to do so let me show you some of these functions in action while we customize this little metal house. And I'm also gonna be showing you on a phone so that if you happen to use that, you can see where things are. 
So we're going to start in the top right and head over to our canvas and then bottom left for images while we are measuring on the screen. I'm going to type in home sweet home and look for a file that I like and then click insert in the bottom right. The house measures four inches wide, so I decided to do three and a half inches so I would have some space around the outside. And I added some vinyl to my mat up in the top left corner. Then I am going to click make it. Now, because I have a Maker 3, I can decide with or without a mat. And because my vinyl is all the way up in the left-hand corner, my image is in the right spot. I'm going to follow the prompts and click the button to have it cut. Now, full transparency, there are more functions and it's easier to see things on your desktop. But if you are just working on a phone or an iPad, no worries. I wanted to show you things can still be done there. Then when it's cut, you're going to pull your vinyl off your mat, use your weeding tool, and peel back the vinyl. Once that's done, take some transfer tape, which is this clear sticky that will help pick it up off of that backing sheet and then it will allow you to transfer it to your item. How do you find fonts and images to use with your projects? If you have a Cricut Access subscription, you can just go right into Cricut and select either images or go through the fonts. Like I mentioned before, there are some free options if you don't have access, but if you do have access, it opens the doors to a ton of other files that you can use as part of that premium subscription within Cricut Design Space. If you're looking for things outside of Cricut, here are some of my favorite places to go. You can pause and screenshot, but here are all of my kind of go-to websites to find both fonts and free cut files. So I'll link them down below but here are my favorite places to find these items we'll talk about uploading in just a second but as far as fonts you can just download them and then depending on if you have a mac or a pc just google how to add fonts to your computer and then you can quickly add it and once it's on your system it will appear up here in cricut's fonts so then that way you can select it as you're designing in design space there were tons of questions around what different types of files you can upload to Design Space, as well as what's the difference, which ones do I want, what is an SVG really even. So I wanted to break those down for you so you guys know the difference between the files and kind of what they mean. So here's a full list of all the file types you can upload to Cricut Design Space. To keep it simple, we're going to focus on the top three. The ones for cut files, I typically use SVGs and PNGs. I like to stick with, if I can, SVGs and PNGs because they are going to give you the transparent background that you want so that you can cut out your image. Now the main difference between the two, as you can see here, is the one on the left, the Mama Claus, is an SVG. So you can go through and select the individual pieces within the file. So instead of it just being one chunk, it's got different pieces. You can change the colors. You can select elements like this M and hit delete and take it out of the file. You can edit it a lot more than you really can with a PNG, but a PNG file will cut just as well. It just won't have all those different pieces. If you're cutting with an SVG though, you want to make sure that you attach items because if you go like it is right now and try to cut it, it's going to give you this jumbled mess on your mat. Instead, you're going to want to ungroup the whole file so you can just select the whole thing and hit ungroup and then attach it by color. So then that way it will cut all in one piece and we'll get deeper into attach in the next question. Now, when you're in design space, there are a lot of different buttons, which many of them we've went over already, but the ones that I got so many questions about are attach, weld, slice, group, flatten. All of them sound just similar enough, but they do all have different functions. So let me break it down for you. So now you know which button to use when you're in design space. Now for illustrative purposes, we are going to do two shapes here to explain all of these. So a red circle and a purple square. All of these functions are available when you have two or more objects selected. So I'm gonna drag over the top of these two and select both of them. You can tell they're selected by the gray on the right. Let's first select group. This is going to group the pieces together while you design on the canvas, but this is not gonna have any bearing to what mat it goes on. The color is going to trump the group. When both are selected and you go down and click attach, that is going to hook them together so that they can be cut in the same color. It's not a super permanent thing because you can go down and click detach if you want to make them not attached anymore. On the other hand, if you go back and do the weld option, it's going to do the same thing for you, but it's like super gluing them together. There's no unweld button. So if you know you want your two items to be cut together and stay together, weld it. Attach will do the same thing. It'll just give you the ability to go back on it later. For the next one, it's slice. And for this to work, you need to have two overlapping items. So I'm gonna overlap these two, select both and hit slice. It's gonna act as a cookie cutter. So as you see here, I have my two shapes, but they sliced right where they were overlapped. 
If I select all of them and click flatten, it's going to turn it into a print and cut image. So if you're designing in Design Space and you'd rather print it than cut it out on vinyl or cardstock or whatnot, this is the option for you. This next tip is going to be for my phone or iPad users and it's how to use snap to matte. This is how you can use up a ton of scraps on one mat and cut in different colors. When you're ready to cut, make sure everything is the same color on your canvas and then click snap to mat down in the corner as you're going to cut. What it's gonna do is capture your mat and then you can use your finger to go through and as you can see on the right with my phone recording that you can then move around the little files to which one needs to be which color. Then you just connect it via Bluetooth to your machine, select that you're cutting vinyl or whatever you wanna cut, and then it will go to work for you. So then that way you don't have to put in here, it would have been five different mats. Instead, I put in one, and then I have all of my different cuts in different colors. Then I can go through, weed them out, and apply them to a project, and it's so much quicker and such a time saver. So before you cut, snap to mat, it will help you a ton. So many of you had questions around projects with different colors and how to layer vinyl, so let me show you how to do that. So for this one, we're gonna use another Dollar Tree blank. This is just a little mason jar sign and I'm gonna start by measuring it. It's four inches wide, so I wanna do three and a half inches for a decal so I've got space around the outside. I'm gonna start by clicking images and search gingerbread house. And I found this one with a variety of different colors, which will be perfect to show you this trick for weeding. I'm gonna go through and add the words gingerbread and then holiday bakery at the bottom. Just pick whatever fonts that you like. You can also curve them or use any of the other tricks that I showed you earlier in this video. When you're all set there, you're gonna select everything and go up to the top and hit align center. Then that's gonna make sure everything is in the right spot before you go aligning it. Then because we're gonna do four different colors, brown, white, red, and green, we're going to add four identical squares and then go back up to that align and align them center over the top of each other. We're gonna use these boxes as an alignment tool so that you can make sure that your vinyl gets lined up straight every time. Then before we do this next trick, make sure that you ungroup anything. So the house is grouped, so we're gonna ungroup that. Then we're gonna select one square in our first color, then our next square in our next color, and when I'm selecting my red color, I'm also selecting the words because when we attach them, they're gonna become red and repeat that for all of the different pieces. Then it's going to slot them onto four different mats for you so that you can then cut them out. Another trick here is on the left, you can click whichever mat you wanna cut first. So you don't have to cut the number one mat first. You could click down and hit four and it will cut for you there. Then follow the prompts, load everything in, all your different colors, and then you're gonna cut it out and weed it just like you would any other one color graphic. Then the trick is when you go to apply it, you're gonna want a piece of transfer tape the size of your overall decal, and you're gonna start with something small. So we're gonna start with green here. Then using our square in the right hand corner, we're going to put the square over the other square and then squeegee it on. That is going to allow you to put everything in the same spot because those squares are in the same spot on all of your pieces. So then repeat it again with the white and then with the red and that's going to allow you to get everything in the spot that it needs to be without worrying about stuff sticking to the wrong stuff and it being stressful because that happens to me all the time. Once everything is applied, you're just going to want to remove that box up in the corner so that doesn't stick onto anything. And then you can apply it just like you would a one color decal. I really love using those boxes. You can use whatever shape you want. I just usually do a square, but just align them, attach them, and you are ready to go. Also, this trick can be used for super intricate designs as well. I recently made this really fun Mary Fetchmas Mean Girls inspired Starbucks mug, and I used the same little box in the corner trick to get everything to be applied in the right spot. Now, granted, this probably is a little intimidating if you're new to Cricut. However, you can use this trick for easy layering as well as more complex layering, and it works just the same. So now you're probably thinking, Whitney, what about HTV or iron-on vinyl? Well, first, if you're new to Cricut, that is the same thing. Heat transfer vinyl and iron-on are the exact same. I'm going to show you how to do a one-color transfer as well as then how to layer them. 
So for this first one, we are going to measure the first pouch that I have here, and I want to make something for Finn. It's really hard for us to find different bluey things, and he loves the cartoon, so I decided to go to Google, find a bluey coloring image, and then bring it in to remove all the elements. I'm going to go to upload, select the image I just downloaded from Google, and then I'm going to make sure that the magic eraser is selected, and I'm going to go through to any area where I want to cut out the white or the background and it will take it out for you. Once that's set, I'm going to put it onto the canvas and then I'm also going to find a fun font and type out Finn's things. Now, like I mentioned before, we're going to select both of those and we're going to attach them, make sure they're the right size and send them to cut. Now, the biggest difference here between heat transfer vinyl and regular adhesive is that you need to mirror it. When you go to put your heat transfer vinyl onto your mat, make sure that you put the shiny side down. Both sides might look shiny, but there's definitely a more shiny side. Put that down because that is gonna be your carrier sheet that protects the vinyl when you put the heat on it. You're gonna cut it out. Make sure again that it is mirrored on Cricut Design Space. And then when you take it out, you can go ahead and weed it just like you would anything else. When you're done weeding, apply it to your pouch and then we're going to heat press it. You can also use an iron. I like to do 320 degrees for about 25 seconds. Once it's pressed, let it cool. You can peel off that carrier sheet and you've got a customized little bag. Now what if we want to layer the heat transfer vinyl? No worries, I've got you covered there too. Here I grabbed this crafting kind of tongue-in-cheek saying and we're just going to go up to the top and add an offset so that the background can be in purple and the text is going to be in black. Once you have the two colors, we're going to cut it the exact same way so the purple will cut, make sure you mirror it, all of those things. And then when it comes out, we're going to weed it just the same, but this time we are going to apply the purple one down first do the 25 seconds, and then when we apply the black vinyl, because it's gonna go directly onto vinyl instead of fabric, we're only gonna press it for 15 seconds. Then that way you're not gonna scorch the heat transfer vinyl that's underneath, and you're gonna be able to have your vinyl stick. You're gonna follow the same process here, let it cool, peel it back, and I now have a really fun little pouch that can hold all my Cricut supplies. The nice thing about heat transfer vinyl is that it's not going to stick to the other vinyl until it's heated, so you can get it aligned right where you want. And if you really need to, you can use some heat resistant tape to make sure it stays in place, but I never use that for heat transfer vinyl. You can just go ahead and press it. Now with the new Maker 3 and Explore 3, you can use Cricut Smart Materials to cut super long pieces of vinyl, but if you have a original Maker or you've got an Explore Air 2 or other models that just cut up to the 12 by 24 mat, let me show you how you can create a project bigger than the mat, how you can kind of slice and dice it in design space so that you can cut it out in multiple pieces and easily place it back together. This comes in handy when I'm trying to make huge signs. You can use it for a variety of different things, but I use the slice tool. So I wanted to make a porch sign with this welcome design and I needed it to be 36 inches tall, but that is not gonna work with a 24 inch mat. So get your item to the size that you want. So here I sized it to 36 inches tall, even though I know it's not gonna cut and I created a square. You're gonna unlock the aspect ratio and size it to your mat. So if it's a 12 by 12, do 11.5 by 11.5. If you are using a 12 by 24 mat, do 11.5 by 23.5 like I'm doing here. Then we're gonna go to a range and send it to the back so we can see what we're doing. Now the key here is to make sure that the edge of your box is not gonna cut through any letters. So I'm just scooching this down so it fits nicely between the C and the O. I'm gonna select both the rectangle as well as my design and click slice. Then I'm gonna end up with four pieces instead of two. You can get rid of the one that looks like a stencil and then you'll have two of your top sections just cause it cut it out that way. But then you're gonna have two pieces but it's going to be the right size. You can send it to cut and it will be on two of your mats and then you just have to apply them and just align it center when you put it on your project.
There were a ton of questions around print then cut and how to make stickers with your Cricut. I actually have a separate video that will go deep, deep, deep into how to do that, how to create things with other free files. So I will link that down below if you wanna learn about print then cut. If you're wondering what materials should be used for what, I also have a huge full materials guide. So to save you some time today, you can head over to that video if that's something that would help you. I also get a ton of questions around what are the best beginner friendly projects if you just got a Cricut. You are in luck. I have a ton of different videos with different projects, whether you want to go seasonal or everyday decor. So after you watch this video, if you're ready to get going, I've got a ton more inspiration for you. A huge thank you to Cricut for partnering with me today so I could bring you this video and share all of my tips and tricks. Let me know down in the comments what you learned today and if you now after watching this are gonna break out your Cricut and get crafting. And be sure to hit subscribe if you're new to Cricut and you want some tips and tricks from me because I will continue to bring those to you throughout the new year. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!